Hey, Flipped Geometry, how you doing? This is Mr. Alley. We are diving into Chapter 3 today. Um, in the new 4th edition of BJU's Geometry Text, they are taking analytical geometry and making it part of the main line chapter progression of the textbook. In the past, they've had analytical geometry as a... Um, a little like side box section in each chapter. Now they're actually making a chapter of analytical geometry. So I think it's a good move. It makes it easier to deal with. And here we are in the fourth edition starting chapter three, which will be about kind of marrying algebra and geometry together and producing their little baby called analytical, analytical geometry. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. We're going to be looking at transversals for the first two parts of this chapter. And we're going to be looking at what happens when you take two lines and cut them by another line. So you have one line that intersects two others. We're going to discover all kinds of things about the angles that those form, and it's going to be very necessary for you to have this information going forward. So um, let's, uh, let's define a transversal. A transversal is a line that intersects two or more coplanar lines in more than one point. In other words, it isn't three lines coming together at one point. It's one line intersecting two other lines. Okay, so this would be two lines being intersected by a transversal. And we therefore create eight angles here. We're going to give lots of names to these angles. So um, this part of the chapter is, is pretty vocab heavy. Um, and we will use these vocabulary words a lot for the next several chapters. So uh, two lines cut by a transversal makes these eight angles. Let's learn what to call them. Um, if you have angles that are in the same position uh, of the two intersections, then they are called corresponding. So example, angle one and angle three. See how they're both in the upper left? This corner and this corner, those are corresponding angles. Okay, Five and seven would also be corresponding. Two and four six and eight would be corresponding. They're in the same locations of these various intersections. Um, alternate exterior means that they're on the opposite sides of these intersections. So five is in the upper right, four is in the lower left. Those are alternate exterior angles, okay? They're in the opposite sides of the transversal and on opposite sides of the lines that the transversal is cutting. So another example would be one and eight. Those are alternate exterior angles. Similarly, there are alternate interior angles, which are also on the opposite sides of the transversal, but instead of being on the outside of the lines, they're on the inside of the lines. So two, seven, or three and six, those are alternate interior angles. Okay, and then consecutive interior on the same side of the transversal and between the other lines. So angle two and three are consecutive interior angles. Angles seven and six are consecutive interior angles. If you need to see all those definitions again, I don't blame you. Go ahead, feel free to pause the video and go back. So what do we do with these? Well, we can prove that the two lines that the transversal is cutting are parallel lots of ways. Or if we know that they're parallel, we can use the, the angles to demonstrate which angles have to be uh, congruent to each other. So we're going to go through a whole big pile of postulates here, um, but they are, they're logical, they make sense, this should not be overwhelming. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the corresponding angles are congruent. So in other words, if they're in the same place, then they are congruent. So if angle A and uh, sorry, line A and line B are parallel and they're cut by a transversal, then one and three need to be congruent, two and four need to be congruent, six and eight need to be congruent, and seven and five need to be congruent. Corresponding arrows are congruent. So find the measure of each angle if measure of four is 53 degrees. Here's 53 degrees. What's two? Well, two has to be the same angle because they're corresponding. What's seven? Well, seven has to be the same thing, 53 degrees, because they're alternate, I'm sorry, because they're a vertical angle pair. So we already know about vertical angles, right? They're across an intersection from each other. So seven must also be 53 degrees. What's angle five? Well, five and seven are in the same position. They're corresponding. So they need to be 
53 degrees. What is angle three? Now this one is throwing you a little bit of a curve. Um, what's the relationship between four and three? They are a linear pair, which means that they are supplementary. And so therefore, if we have if an angle four is 53 degrees, what's the supplement? That would be 127. Yes, 127 degrees. So um, if you need to look through any of these again, go ahead and pause the video and go back. Totally fine. Alternate interior angles are also congruent if the lines uh, that we're looking at are, are parallel. So if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the alternate exterior angles, I just said interior, huh? Exterior is also true. Then the alternate exterior angles are congruent. So alternate exteriors would be one and eight or four and five. So in this case, if line A and B are parallel and line T is cutting them as a transversal, then the alternate exterior angles are congruent. Okay, those are the same angles. So um, let's let's go ahead and do a proof with that idea. If lines A and B are parallel with transversal T, that's given to us, um, then angle one is congruent to angle three, and those are corresponding angles. Okay, and so that's the corresponding angle postulate. Angle three must be congruent to angle eight. Angle three and angle eight must be congruent, and that is the vertical angle theorem. Yep, good job. And then we're going to say that then angle one and angle eight, excuse me, angle one and angle eight must also be congruent because if one is congruent to three and three is congruent to eight, then one is congruent to eight. That's the transitive. There you go, transitive property of congruent angles. And so uh, we have demonstrated that 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 theory is in fact true okay alternate interior angle theorem that's what i spoke misspoke a few seconds ago um, alternate exteriors and alternate interiors are congruent if the lines are parallel so if line a and b are parallel and cut by transversal t then two must be congruent to seven and three must be congruent to six uh, and the angles are uh, you know you can see that they look like they should be and we will prove that together here in just a little bit. The next idea is that consecutive interior angles are supplementary. And we already kind of demonstrated that with an example a moment ago. If 4 and 2 are congruent because they're corresponding angles, and if 3 and 4 are supplementary because they're a linear pair, then 3 and 2 must also be supplementary, right? Um, and so the, uh, the idea here is that any two angles that are consecutive interior angles are going to be supplementary. Here we have a slight modification to all of this. If you have two lines that are parallel and are cut by a transversal, and if the transversal is perpendicular to one of those parallel lines, then it must also be perpendicular to the other parallel line. Okay, And we can prove that together as well. Um, so if this angle happens to be 90 degrees, which it's not drawn that way, but if it is, if this is 90 degrees, then the corresponding angle has to also be 90 degrees, right? And so if it's parallel, if these two lines are parallel and this is a right angle, then this must also be a right angle. It's pretty easy to demonstrate. And here's a last example for us before we jump into the classwork together. Uh, find the measure of each numbered angle. If the measure of angle 1 is 7y minus 15 degrees, that's this one. And the measure of angle two is 10 times y plus 11 degrees. That's this one. So this angle and this angle need to be congruent, right? Because these lines are parallel, cut by a transversal. These are corresponding. So that means that this angle plus this angle need to be a 180 because they are a linear pair, which means that I should be able to take these two algebraic statements and uh, say that when you sum them together, you get 180 degrees. So then we could do a little bit of algebra. If we take these two uh, angles statements and we put them together and we say that they sum 180 degrees, we can solve for y. So I, I won't bore you with all the algebra, but first we need to distribute this, right? And then we will combine like terms, and then we can solve for y by bringing 95 over and then dividing by 17. And then we can take what we found that y is and put it back up here. 
and de declare that measure 1 equals 20 degrees and measure 2 equals 160. So you will be doing that kind of stuff today. That's all that we have for this particular lecture. Um, if you have any questions, we can address them tomorrow in class, or you can put them in, in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to get to them in a timely manner. Uh, until then, God bless you, Jesus loves you, and so do I.